Let me say something that will make half of Linux YouTube nod knowingly and the other half call me insane. I love Slackware, and yet I don't really use it, except for my server. That sounds like a contradiction, I know. But if you spend any real time with Slackware, you already understand exactly what I mean. Slackware is one of those distros that feels like Linux the way it used to be, honest, predictable, boring in the best possible way, no magic, no abstractions, pretending to be simplicity, just you, the system, and the consequences of your decisions. And that's precisely why I admire it. But it's also why it doesn't end up on my daily machines. Slackware doesn't lie to you. That alone puts it in a rare company in 2025. There's no illusion of control, no friendly layer that promises safety while quietly doing things behind your back. When Slackware boots, you know what started, why it started, and how to stop it. In its scripts are readable shell scripts, configuration lives in sane places. If something breaks, it breaks honestly. And that philosophy carries through the entire system. Slackware doesn't chase trends. It doesn't pivot every five minutes because some conference decided something was the future. It doesn't rewrite the entire OS just to look modern. It ships proven software. It waits, it watches, and then maybe it updates. That's why Slackware systems, once installed and configured, are rock solid. I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Slackware might be the most stable Linux distribution that exists. Not enterprise stable where stability means contractual uptime while everything else is on fire. No, I mean actual stability. You can install Slackware, configure it, and then forget about it for months and sometimes even years. It doesn't wake up one morning and decide your workflow is obsolete. It just works. Here's something people don't talk about enough. Slackware feels done. Once you finish installing and configuring it, there's a sense of closure. The system isn't constantly evolving underneath you. There's no background churn, no surprise migrations, no silent changes in behavior. Your system today behaves like your system tomorrow. And that's deeply comforting, especially if you're someone who actually uses their computer instead of endlessly reconfiguring it. Slackware respects your time after installation, and yes, that qualifier matters. Now, let's talk about the pain, because Slackware absolutely earns its reputation. First, compilation rules. Slackware's packaging philosophy is elegant and also kind of hilarious at the same time. There's a right way to do things, and that right way often involves compiling software yourself using Slack build scripts. In theory, this is great. Transparent builds, reproducible results, no mystery binaries. In practice, well, you're about to spend your evening watching text scroll by. Slack builds are often incomplete or out of date or assume you already installed some dependency three weekends ago. And when something fails, it doesn't fail gracefully. It fails in every Slackware way, which is to say it assumes you know what to do next. Slackware famously doesn't do automatic dependency resolution. This isn't a bug. It's a design decision. The system trusts you. That's admirable philosophically consistent, and occasionally exhausting, because modern software stacks are absurd. If you want one tool, and suddenly you're building 15 libraries in three language runtimes, and something written by a grad student who hasn't touched the repo since 2019, 
on Slackware, you discover all this manually by reading documentation, by reading build errors, by trial and error. That's educational. It's also very slow. Let's be honest. Installing software on Slackware takes a long time. Not five minutes longer long. I mean it grab some coffee, consider your life choices long. Especially if you're building from source, which you often are. And yes, once it's installed, it's great. Clean, minimal, exactly what you ask for. By getting there, that's the tax you pay for control. And in 2025, when you just want to get work done, that tax feels heavier than it used to. So why do I still love it? Despite all of this, I love Slackware. Because it hasn't betrayed its principles. Because it treats users like adults. Because it reminds me what Linux actually is underneath all the layers we've piled on top. Slackware teaches you patience. It teaches you how systems fit together. It teaches you to respect simplicity. Not the marketing kind, but the real kind. If you want to learn Linux, Slackware is a phenomenal teacher. But here's the truth. I don't use Slackware as my main distro. I run my server on it. Not because it's bad, but because my priorities are a little different. I value my time. I still want control, but I also want momentum. I want tools available now, not after an afternoon of compiling. I want stability and convenience. Slackware gives you ability first and convenience last. And I respect that. Slackware is like an old perfectly maintained truck. It'll run forever. It's easy to fix. Nothing is hidden. But it doesn't have heated seats or lane assist or any of those modern gadgets. And it never will. And... I don't need those things, and I don't need the bells and whistles that current Linux desktops offer. I love Slackware because it refuses to be anything other than what it is. I don't use it daily because I live in 2025, and sometimes you just need things to install without a dissertation. If Slackware disappeared tomorrow, Linux would be the worst for it. Because some projects exist not to win but to remind us of what matters. And Slackware still does that better than almost anyone. And if you've used Slackware, let me know your experience. And if you haven't, you give it a try once. Not forever, just long enough to understand why people like me still love it. If you'd like to find out why some Linux YouTubers insist on using proprietary garbage, you can check that video out right there. And I'd like to thank these am amazing people right here. And if you'd like to support me, please consider doing so. That's what makes this show possible. Peace, guys. <laughs>